just a bit of bonus content for you right now, okay? This is not an automotive package. So if you're here just for the car stuff, this probably won't be of interest to you. But a couple of years ago, Olight took a punt on me and said, hey, we want to sponsor some of your videos. And I went, yeah, okay, let's give that a go. And here we are. And I'm a huge fan of all of the products that I accept sponsorships for. I've got two basic protocols for sponsorships. One is I've got to like the product. I've got to use it and respect it. And the second one is it can't be related to new cars because that would be a conflict of interest. So I just want to talk to you about the whole Olight thing. A, because they've got a sale that starts tonight, which would be Monday the 17th of April 2023. And it goes until midnight on Friday. So it's every workday this week, but typically the really, really good on sale offers sell out quickly. I'll have links in the description and all of that palaver. But I wanted to talk to you about the problem with Olight, like, is choosing one. And this is the problem with new cars. It's the problem with everything else. It's the burden of choice, right? Because when you want a car, let's say you want an SUV. There's a hundred different SUVs on sale in Australia. And there's small SUVs and medium SUVs and large SUVs, but there's 30 something of each one of those categories as well. And Everyone's screaming at you about how great every product is, like every product is allegedly the best. And you face this with every consumer choice. Like I recently bought like childhood fantasy. I recently bought a lathe and a milling machine and same problem there. Like milling machines, there's 30 different milling machines on sale at machinerywhouse.com.au. Actually, I, I think I counted them and there was 27 at the time and they range from like a 1100 bucks to second mortgage kind of thing. And how do you choose? It's really hard to choose and drilling down into all the features and what kind of device do I want? Do I want the Bridgeport style where the table is the Z-axis or do I want that dovetail version where the head comes up and down and that's the, that's the Z-axis movement kind of thing is what I'm saying. So I wanted to do something I hardly ever do, which is drill down into the different kinds of O-lights so that you can choose the right torch for you. And this is something where often you don't get a lot of advice. Like you just get a lot of advice about what are the features. This torch has these features and this torch has these features. And you've got to infer which ones are the best for you. So I just want to drill down into the highlights of the range, if you like, and I've broken them down into four categories, which would be like workshop and roadside repair. This is like, what torch would I put in my car and would I have in my workshop for a bit of portable light, okay? The next one I've got for you is outdoor adventuring, right? And this is in the context of vehicular outdoor adventuring, beard stroking, dingo piss creek, here we come kind of thing. Then we've got... Something for the kiddies, right? Because it's kind of important for the kiddies to feel comfortable and secure when they're camping or when there's a power failure or at other times when things go a little bit sideways. And maybe you can also use this kind of thing to teach them responsibility, like uh, being responsible for recharging and being responsible for having it with you, like bring it with you when you go camping and have it ex have it in a place that you can find in the dark if there's a power failure. So that's kind of good for the kiddies as well. And the final category, one of my favourites, is EDC, okay? Everyday carry. What should you choose? What features really matter? And this is like the distillation of everything I learned from being a complete light newbie two or three years ago to having basically played with everything in the range and I'm doing it for you right now because there's some really good discounts with the current sale and there's some time to consider because we got until Friday all right so let's kick off with workshop and roadside repair which I'm a huge fan of this range here which is called for fairly obvious reasons the swivel okay this is the first swivel. It's your basic model swivel. Costs about 40 bucks. It's a light and a torch. So that's kind of clever. So you get your work light, but you also get your torch. And it's in the one package. And it's USB rechargeable. So 
you know, it's multiple brightness levels and all kinds of things of that nature. And it's compact, it's magnetic, so that, you know, if you want to stick it on the inside of your bonnet, it just sticks there and you can work on your engine in the middle of the night in the boonies. You can stick it on the outside of your mudguard uh, and it can help you change a tyre by allowing you to see the lug nuts. Or you can just sit it on the ground and angle it up where you want. So very versatile for that sort of thing. It's also USB rechargeable so you can get a USB-C cable and plug it in in the car. If you've got a reasonably modern car with USB out you can keep your flashlight recharged in this way. They all function in this way and then the swivel was obviously so popular and so affordable like about 40 bucks it's a no-brainer for the car but there's upgraded versions as well which would be the swivel pro and the swivel pro max and if i had one flashlight that i needed in the car and in the workshop one of these would be it it would probably be this middle one the swivel pro for a few reasons we'll get to but they're all IPX4. X means not rated for dust ingress, but 4 means splash resistant. So a bit of light rain out in the environmental boonies, no problem, okay, but not waterproof. So that's a consideration. You can have one of these, if you've got a drill press in a bit of a dark corner, which I have just over there, you can actually stick that to the side of your drill press and illuminate the job. So that's kind of cool as well. And if you just want to, you know, you've always got to do work in your shed or work under the house or something like that. You bring it with you under the house, sit it on the floor. You've got to solder some water pipe together or whatever. This is a great light source to augment, I don't know, a headlamp or whatever else you're using at the time. It can keep the light continuously at the work area and your head torch can look over at your tool bag or whatever. So it's a really versatile thing. And you can, of course, use the torch at uh, in the same way if you need a tighter beam to go sort of further. So what you get is 400 lumens here, 1100 lumens maximum, they're all dimmable obviously, and 1600 lumens with the big one, okay? 40 bucks, 76 bucks on sale and 98 bucks on sale. So to me, these just seem incredibly good value, like 98 bucks for that. It also operates as a power bank. And this is the fundamental distinction, right? Much brighter, but no torch. You lose the torch, but you pick up USB-C power bank functionality. So in isolation, this can replace a standalone battery bank that you're carrying with you now, and it'll charge your phone if your phone goes flat. So that's pretty cool, I guess. Uh, these two both have flashing red mode as well. So if you break down in a bad location on a country back road, you can set your swivel up on the roof kind of thing and aim it back at oncoming traffic with flashing red mode and that might just tip the safety balance a little bit in your favour. Now, they're a no-brainer to me. I have a swivel, the base model swivel, in my car at all times, and I kind of use this one in the workshop, but if I had to buy one, it would be this middle one, 76 bucks on sale, and I really think, like, dude, how do they do it for the money, okay? So let's move on, and let's talk about outdoor adventuring, because... Outdoor adventuring is a big thing. Three of the top ten cars are uh, by sales are dual cab utes. The, the sales volume is overwhelmingly du dual cab in the ute segment. And then the balance of the top ten is almost exclusively SUV, right? There's, there's very few cars being sold at the moment. And one of the principal reasons for buying an SUV is obviously family this and family that. One of which is, let's go camping, let's go adventuring in regional wherever, especially since COVID, right, with international travel being less popular and domestic travel being more popular and, you know, caravan sales through the roof and all that stuff. So for outdoor adventuring, I came up with these two. Um, these are called the Marauder, all right? I don't know why. <laughs> they don't... They don't make me think about the Viking hordes or anything like that, but they're particularly good torches. The Marauder basically came first, and then they brought the Marauder Mini in. And I'd have to say the Marauder Mini is just an awesome torch because it's obviously much smaller than the Marauder, but not all that much less in terms of its 
overall performance. And it's got some really cool features. Now, the Marauder, the big one, also functions as a power bank. And you can see here that it's got a lockable sort of uh, USB-C port in the back of it. And there's a really clever switch on both of these ones which requires you to rotate it a bit before you can turn it on. That's important because it prevents it being activated when it's just sitting in the central cubby bin of the car. If it sits down and something presses on it, it doesn't turn on. I mean, I'm pressing on that now as hard as I can. It's not turning on. And then I'll rotate the switch just a little bit and it turns on. So, yay. And it's got a million different brightness uh, levels as well. And the other really cool thing about the Marauder range is there's spot beam and flood beam. Okay, so if you want to do search and rescue kind of thing from the car, if you want to see, try and find something a long distance away, you've got your spot beam, which is fantastic for that. And then you just flick one little switch and then you're at a floodlight mode, which is much more sort of campsite friendly. And you can obviously dim it right down so that it doesn't blind everyone around the campsite. And then if you really do need a big, bright floodlight, then you've got that as well, obviously, for somewhat less time. So the way this breaks down, 195 bucks for the Mini and 350 bucks for the big one. So this is a serious investment, whereas this is much less, but not that much less in performance. And I'll lay that out for you. In flood mode, this one is twice as bright, like 14,000 lumens, which is a serious floodlight. So we'll just put it into flood mode now. That's in flood mode now, as bright as it goes on the background, which is seriously bright, right? It's blowing out the total exposure. And I've got some pretty cool studio lights in here that are reasonably bright. So it's very bright. This is only half as bright as that, but we'll go for the full flood mode here. Still pretty bright. But the really interesting thing for me is in spotlight mode, because in spot mode, and you can see it here, the square one here is the big one, and the round one here is the little one. So what you get here is 900 lumens versus 850. The small one is actually brighter than the big one, which is, to me, just amazing. And that's where you really want the brightness performance, I think. That's because if you've got to punch a lot of light a long way down there for search and rescue or something of that nature, that's when you need your torch to be bright. Whereas in floodlight mode, around a campsite, 7,000 lumens versus 14,000, like 7,000 is plenty bright, is kind of what I'm saying. There's also a substantial weight advantage. This is 462 grams versus 750, so much easier to carry this around in concert with a whole bunch of other equipment on a belt or in a backpack or, a, a, you know, some sort of a chest rig or whatever. This is much more carryable and easier to hold for a long period of time too because 760 whatever grams doesn't seem very heavy for two or three minutes but try carrying it for two or three hours and it gets old in a hurry. So these are both IPX8 as well which means three metres for 30 minutes worth of waterproofing which is just the official designation of IPX8 is hermetically sealed, so it would be very difficult in the context of outdoor adventuring to damage one of these with water ingress. The big difference, of course, the big one is USB-C rechargeable, whereas like most Olights, although not the swivel range, there's a USB, a proprietary USB to proprietary magnetic connection that finds its way home and you just plug this into any USB source. But for a torch like this, you're mad if you don't just keep it in the car. If you only go outdoor adventuring occasionally, I suppose there's a real case for having this near the front door or the back door if there's a power failure or a fire or something of that nature and you need a lot of light quickly to do a head count, make sure the family's safe or whatever, then having a torch like this, good to go, on the bedside table or in a designated spot like a choke point in the house makes real sense. So the battery life is forever 
when you're not using it and you just have to remember you got to get familiar with turning the switch to turn the torch on because it does have that accidental touch protection inbuilt but a brilliant option for outdoor adventuring now <laughs> the kiddies okay the kiddies are a really interesting concept to me because kids are more resilient than you think and this is called an o bulb okay this is an o bulb plus they, they've got a smaller version, which is just a standard O-bulb, but O-bulb is really interesting because it's good for the kids in so many ways. I thought it was a real toy, but you know what? It's not a toy at all. It's much tougher than it seems, the mighty O-bulb. We'll just get to stepless dimming, right? From bright to not that bright at all and then off. Like, it's a brilliant idea, literally, no pun intended. And it's got all these different modes. The kids can play with that. And it's got app control so they can control it with their phone. But it's also more than amenable to just manual mode selection, brightness control, and all of those things, right? You can dim it up, dim it down. Really simple. Set it where you want. Last forever on low mode. And really good for the kids, right, If because you can teach them. You can teach them to have it at a particular spot next to their bed. So if the lights are all out and you've got a power failure, middle of the night, they wake up disoriented, there you go. There's a bit of light. You can have whatever mode of light you want. Quite comforting for the kids. And, you know, it can be their responsibility to keep it charged and have it ready and put it in their bag when you're going camping. Great inside a tent because it's such a nice, soft, comforting light for them. So... It's also waterproof, right? IPX7, which means uh, one metre worth of immersion for 30 minutes. And it's also drop tested to one metre. So they, they seem a bit fragile when you pick one up and you think, oh, I don't know how long that'll last. We've had a bunch of the first O-bulbs here at home for this and that. The girls use them all the time and they've been really durable and I'd have to say really, really good. Turn off. There you go. So that's not bad for the kids. And finally, I thought we'd talk about EDC because, you know, EDC is such a, a big topic. And my favourite torch is actually not on sale this week. This is the Olight Warrior Mini 2. And you can just see in relation to my hand how big it is. The one that is on sale is the Warrior X3. And you, can, you don't have to get it in bright orange. It comes in a whole range of colours, as does the Warrior Mini 2. But I just want you to look at them from an everyday carry point of view and look at the relative sizes. And it's $104 currently, and this is about $126 on sale. Right, 1,750 lumens, which is two stages, not that bright, and then holy shit, Batman. And this is same sort of deal off the tail switch, not that bright, and then, Jesus, 2,300. So 1,750, 2,300, but substantially bigger with the Warrior X3. And they're both IPX8, so they're three meters, and they're drop-tested as well, so you don't have to worry. I've dropped this one heaps. In fact... I've given this the whole repertoire of drop tests. It's been dropped on concrete, it's been dropped on steel, it's been dropped off ladders, it's been dropped off me perching precariously wherever, doing this and that, which, you know, someone incipiently 60-year-old should probably not be doing, but hey, it's, it's either that or just give up entirely, isn't it? So the other interesting thing about these torches is you can decide exactly how you want to carry them. Okay, so you can go bezel down in the pocket or you can reverse the clip and go bezel up. So that's a personal preference thing when it comes to deployment. Personally, I prefer bezel down because it just makes it easier to pick up and have ready. The other thing I wanted to talk about is that they, they class these torches as quote unquote tactical. Okay, and tactical is one of the great overused words of the 21st century in my view, but... Let me just talk to you about what that means, okay? So from a tactical point of view, it's difficult, for example, to grab one of these out of a bag in a stressful situation and remember to rotate the switch and then turn it on and think, am I in spotlight mode or floodlight mode? And that's a different switch to make that happen. So when you're in a stressful situation, 
your body gets flooded with stress hormones, cortisol and noradrenaline and things of that nature. And there's a bunch of physiological changes that happen to you and you vasoconstrict at your extremities so that you lose fine motor control. It becomes very difficult to orient the torch and rotate the switch and turn it on and do things of that nature. Your peripheral vision shuts down so that you get better at focusing on a threat. And, you know, you're in the middle of, for many people, an amygdala hijack, which is a particularly scary situation to be in. So in that situation, the tools that you use have to be easy to use without fine motor control. And that means you have to be able just to reach down, grab it out of your pocket, get your thumb on the back switch. This back switch is so good if you're under pressure because it's always there. You don't have to rotate the torch to a particular location. Like there is a switch like that on both of these torches and you can adjust the brightness and that's absolutely lovely when you're just trying to find something under the bench that you just dropped, like story of my life, world's most boring book, things I picked up after dropping them under the fucking bench. But when you're under stress, it's really good just to have to do this and then boom, okay? Same with this torch, same switch, same magnetic charging infrastructure as all of these other O lights. We'll just leave that running. It's quite pleasant in the background. So the tail switch, so important under pressure. And I'm not suggesting that any of us gets mugged all that often, but you can be under stress in a variety of different ways like you can be in the aftermath of a car crash and you might have to look around for something critical you might have to find something quickly because someone's bleeding you might have to find the first aid kit in the dark because you've been in a car crash and the lights aren't working anymore and you're in the boonies and someone's got a serious cut and every second counts and this is like all of the raw ingredients for an amygdala hijack. And this is just so much simpler, right? Pick it up, press on the back, let there be light. Really important, okay? Now, the other thing is you're not allowed in Australia to carry a weapon for self-defence. That is specifically illegal, right? It's illegal at least here in New South Wales where I live and it's illegal everywhere else that I can think of to my knowledge. And if you're a lawyer, then, which I'm not, and I'm not going to give you legal advice about defending yourself, right? But a torch is not a weapon, but it is a great leveler in a conflict. Because if it's that quintessential Hollywood threat environment, you know, the back alley with limited illumination or the underground car park, and you're the only one in it, and you become accosted by somebody, then this is a fantastic level up that doesn't hurt them. It buys you time. All they can see after being blasted, right, is green and blue splotches, which is awesome. It's not, you're not going to be in court afterwards for giving them a serious case of green and blue splotches for the next 15 minutes in the way that you will if you really tune them up with your fists and your elbows, right? Like, I don't talk about this very much. I did martial arts for all of my life, since I think I first walked into a dojo at the age of 17, and philosophically I never really walked out. So I've thought about the dynamics of violence a lot without actually having engaged in too much of it for most of my adult life. And the dynamics of violence are, are really not what people think, and the aftermath is really serious as well. So if you've got something that can really just destabilise your opponent and it's easy to deploy and quick, then that is a fantastic asset in that very rare situation in our safe society where you can just level things up and convince somebody who wants to rob you or whatever that it's just a bad idea because the rules just change, you know? And if it gets more serious than that, then you can hold a torch like this and you can do everything that you could do empty-handed, like you can jab and you can cross and you can hook and you can elbow. You can do everything that you would do to defend yourself unarmed. And in between attempts at that, you can also blast whoever and interfere with their ability to perceive you as a target. So... 
I guess the question for me with EDC is what should you carry? Because to me, this is just, it's better in every way, except in terms of size. And it's right at the upper end of EDC for me. And like, if you knew you had to kill three zombies this afternoon at 3 p.m. in an underground car park, then I'd be taking a Warrior X3 every time and leaving the Mini 2 at home, dude. But have a look at them. Look at the look at the one that's got all the scuffs on it. Like, what does that tell you? It tells you that the best EDC is the one you're going to carry all the time. And to me, it's just a little bit inconvenient to carry something this big all the time. Whereas a torch like this, you just you don't even know it's in your pocket. It's so good for all of those reasons. I mean... I mean, there are some situations in which a feather duster is probably the perfect EDC, you know, some feather duster fight with Tiffany in the hot tub. And there are other situations in which the perfect EDC is probably a SIG P365 CCW. And to me, in our reasonably safe society, given that mostly what you want is a reliable, versatile flashlight that is still functional, the chances are you're going to be able to make it function in the midst of an amygdala hijack, then the Mini 2 is the choice for me. But I could see that if I was going to go into a particular place and do particular things, like if I was going to go, for example, bushwalking and I needed a more serious torch with more light to punch further down the road, or if I was going to have a torch in a bag, then a Warrior X3 would probably be a better option in a bag than a Mini 2. Like EDC, the other thing is EDC is so personal, right? Some people like bezel up, some people like bezel down, you know. The the differences are the differences are significant, but there's a real subjective component to what's the right torch for EDC. But the main thing is it's got to suit you, but it's got to be reliable. And it's got to be easy and there's got to be no impediment to you having it on you at all times because you can't predict the future and the future never sends you a text message and says, ah, three zombies at 4 p.m. in the Coles car park <laughs> kind of thing. So the, the main thing I'd say to you is think carefully about the size of the thing that you're prepared to carry and whether that's a reasonable trade-off versus its performance or not because... That'd be great every time if you needed something that was quote unquote tactical. If you if you needed to deploy it in a tactical way, bigger is just better. But if you don't have it on you because it's a pain in the ass and it kind of pulls your pants down when you're wearing running shorts or something, then and you don't have it with you and three zombies attack. That's bad for you. Whereas the torch that you've got with you at all times, if one of those zombies is just saying green and blue splotches you can deal with the other two at leisure anyway that's what i've learned about olights over the past three ish years of being involved with the brand i've never had one fail on me in service it's always been completely reliable i didn't check any of these before using them here with you today and that's why i trust them that's why i recommend them and i just think a torch is such a useful thing to have with you. You just got to choose the right one. And the thing that's missing, with all due respect to Olight's website, is how you choose which one is right for you, for whatever mode of application you envisage using it.